Hi, Rex Welch at RW Mods here. Today we're going to take a look at the Atom SV1 engine. Um, nice packaging here. Oh, we got a sticker sheet. Oh, engine comes pretty nicely nestled in there. The foam pad. Oh, looks like we got two restrictors. Uh, seven in the engine and a 6.5 in the box uh, and then uh, engine itself it's a really nice looking engine I I think it's it uh, has some nice graphics on it uh, first appearance of it looks pretty good nicely done head looks to be pretty pretty lightweight carb is a three needle first impressions uh, looks like some pretty nice machining we got some chamfers on the edges here uh, it is made in Taiwan their uh, first the first Atom engine I never ran one but I did run similar engines and they kind of derived from the arrow I believe look to be the same factory and uh, the first edition Adam was a short stroke like the VZB Bluehead, the original VZB Bluehead OS had the same born stroke and actually the crank and piston and sleeve and some of that stuff could be swapped actually between the OS the VZB and the Arrow Adam and, and there was a couple other brands to the similar engine. Uh, this one is the long stroke version, version which is uh, basically the same as XZB so it's a, a more of a I guess you could say copy of the XZB so we'll take it apart here and, and see what we're gonna do see what the internals look like Okay, one thing I like to show in my videos um, is uh, just to make sure that you're aware that the piston needs to be at top dead center. I see the sleeve lifting out of there, but the piston needs to be towards the top when you pull the back plate off. There are some that you... Um, sometimes I see engines come in with a broken skirt on the piston because there's a relief um, cut in the back plate and it it'll break it. This one isn't probably as bad. It doesn't have the lip. Some have just a machine groove there. This one probably wouldn't catch that, but well, it's just a good practice all the time. Anyways, one thing I like to show when I'm doing a video here is the proper way to take a sleeve out. Now this, this sleeve is uh, pretty loose in there and, and some engines will do that new. Some will even do it after some running, but most times after you get some heat cycles through it and some fuel kind of stuck around the piston and sleeve and stuff you'll get uh, they'll be in there pretty good and uh, I usually do is just cut a zip tie um, put a three millimeter screw in the end of the crank a crank nut will work too and then uh, put the zip tie in turn the engine over just just put the zip tie in just barely in the exhaust port and then turn the engine over and it lifts the sleeve out Never, never use any metal. Um, I get a lot of piston sleeves in for resizing and stuff, and they have uh, pry marks around the outside or the pliers on the outside of the sleeve, and uh, it's pretty. It can ruin the sleeve. Sometimes I can fix them, but so we'll take the sleeve out, and then uh, we'll take the piston off the crank. Okay. We'll take the push the crank out. So we have a a steel rear bearing. Uh, that the front bearing actually is a double seal. I'd like to see see that when they got a seal on the inside too. It's just a little more insurance and keeping the dirt out. The crank has a silicone fill, and the grinding on it looks to be pretty good. The 
crank pin has a nice finish, um, pretty smooth finish on it. It's a 14 millimeter crank. <clears throat> they kind of copied the OS style, I guess, of the crank weight and everything. Uh, if it's pretty hard, it'll hold up pretty well. Um, this this brand, uh, this manufacturer, does do a pretty good job with the heat treat, so I think it should be a pretty good lasting crank. Piston and rod does have uh, some bypass holes drilled in the piston. Rod looks to be like they uh, copied the OS rod. I measured it uh, previously. It's the 30 millimeter from center to center. The sleeve is a pretty nice looking sleeve. Looks about like the shape of the XCB ports. Pretty nice. Um, the back plate, it is a, it feels like a hard anodized, which would be nice uh, wear surface on the back plate. One thing I did notice when I took it apart was the head button. Uh, I did some measuring. What I do uh, when I measure piston head clearance is I, I measure from at top dead center, from the top of the sleeve down to the piston. And then I measure from the top of the head button, or it'd be the bottom when it's upside down, but the combustion chamber side of the head button to the shim. And uh, this one has two shims, but I was only getting 15 or 16 thousandths of an inch head clearance, which is not enough. It will run, and it will run okay, but you get it warm and up to race temp, it's going to start detonating. And what that is is a pre-ignition. Um, it'll be pre-igniting, kind of pinging, like, like your uh, everyday driver if you didn't have good enough fuel in it a few years ago and stuff. It'll start pinging. What that is is it's fire. It's firing before the piston gets all the way to top dead center. And then what happens is you'll you'll take it apart, and it'll look like it's sandblasted on there and the top of the piston too. And uh, that's not good. It, it'll it'll run hot. It won't achieve maximum performance, and uh, it'll just run better. This one I can recommend putting two eight thousand shim or 0 0.2 millimeter which is the same as the aluminum shim here. Uh, it should be a standard shim, an over Aussie, any standard long stroke shim should work. Uh, I had, I recommend adding two of those, so 16 thousandths, you'd be close to 30 thousandths piston to head clearance. You can run a little bit less than that, maybe eight thousandths and a four thousandths would be work, work fine. But, and this is a smaller diameter head button uh, similar to the OS. Um, machining down in the block looks to be pretty good. It does have uh, kind of an OS style um, insulator on the carb. So we're going to look at some of the timing numbers on this Atom SV1. It, uh, it's a standard long stroke 30 millimeter rod and for exhaust height we're at 13.85 uh, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit lower exhaust port than uh, the OS which uh, in turn uh, our blow down is 38 degrees versus 45 it should be a little more bottom end a little less top end transfer port is a, we're at 130 boost 121 and uh, crank timing looking at 149 open at 67 degrees it closes a total of 216 degree induction or crank timing we uh, I think that'll be pretty good it'll have uh, some bottom end it's got enough crank timing to kind of open up I think this thing will be actually surprise you for a Taiwan engine on its performance. Has a lot of timing in the crank. It's uh, going to be a pretty good performer. I think uh, only time will tell uh, how the internals hold up under 
under racing conditions how it depends on how lean you run it and everything too but everything looks to be nicely done I would recommend that hem head adding head shims and uh, everything should hold up pretty good I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing some more of these videos and if you if you have a request for one let me know if you know somebody that uh, sells engines uh, I can you can send me one for a review I can just send it back new it's winter time here in Minnesota so I won't be doing any on-track testing in the near future so thanks for watching give me some feedback go to rwmods.com thanks